Going out to the oyster farm today. It's out um, just outside the harbor. A friend of mine um, runs the oyster farm. I've chatted to him. He said there hasn't been many fish on the on the nets, but uh, there's definitely been a few barbel out there, and it's one of our fish that are really sustainable. It's not a very interesting fish, but um, at least I can show you how to um, skin it, prepare it, and if you do want to eat a barbel, it's uh, it's definitely one of the sustainable fish that we can start utilizing because there's an absolute massive population of barbel along our coastline. <laughs> Top, a little nice mushy bait on the bottom. Not a very pretty bait, but it's just there for smell. And uh, fishing in about 10 meters of the water. This feels very much like a barbel or a shark. Very slow. Slow bite. Oh, this is something you can cook with. A giant barbel. Hey, we've got double up bubble. Exactly what I was expecting. At least this one is uh, precise to be able to cook. If you are handling them, just make sure there's a very, very, very sharp spike here. I've got the other one up here and the other one on this side. So just stand very clear of, of that. I've got, I can try and get this hook out now. I'm just concerned about the spike moving across my hand. The slime is what is the toxin. So even if you've got a cut in your hand, you've got to be very, very careful. Move the hook. You can be careful when you throw them as well. I saw someone threw one and it clicked back and ended up in their hands. So better to just drop them, open up your hand and let them go. Another proper bubble here. Yeah? You need to have a few of them. They're not, uh, there's not much meat to them. It feels like a bigger bowl. Yeah, we're getting to a point where we can start eating. This is a slightly bigger rat. It's always good to put on some new bait when you're fishing. Take a little bit of fillet off the side. Go down the middle. It's going to make a long, sort of narrow bait. Keep your hook nice and proud. A little bit of cotton. Flavor. We're going to go into the gut. This is what's going to bring the fish on. Got some of that around. And that's the flavor. And all the oil. Get them on. Boxing. Oh. What do you know? Another barbel. I'm going to go back to the biggest of barbels. I'm going to have another go just to get another bomb bigger than you. More impressive now. Hopefully, I can get to go. Might be done. Yeah, that's a better one. Because we've been waiting for that 800 gram to a kilo shot. Probably about 800. After filleting those four barbel, we're left with 400 grams of fillet. So it's practically 100 grams of fillets per, per fish. Not a lot, but the average fish was sort of 500 grams, leaving you 100 grams of fillets, 20% of the yield. Not a, not a great yield, but if you, you can easily get a lot of barbel there. One of those fish that you can literally throw and get two at a time. So it's a very good fish to use. We've got some sour cream, which we're going to serve. We're going to do some nachos. And I'm going to show you how to make the sauce that the bar, uh, bowl they're going to be infused into and I'm going to show you quickly how to make some guacamole. We've got two avos in here, we've got a lemon and we're just going to take some of the zest off the lemon. I just want to take the green part off and not the white. And we're going to take the same lemon and we're going to cut it up and we're going to use it in the avocado. And what this is going to do is it's going to stop the avocado from oxidizing and going brown and it's going to give it a nice little bit of zing. I'm going to mix that through. And we've got some Old El Paso guacamole mix. This is just going to be the seasoning for it. I'm going to open that up and sprinkle it in. I'm just going to 
going to add some some garlic from about half a teaspoon. I'm going to add some fresh coriander to that as well. So you're going to pop a couple of spring onions in. That's going to give it some nice texture. I've got a pan on you. I've got some oil in it. I've got some red onions and some white onions. Let's give them a little bit of a fry. Mix them around. You've got some roasted tomato and pepper for heater. heater. You take a packet of that. I'm going to put that through. Traditionally, Mexican food contains a lot of cumin and ground coriander and fresh coriander. And uh, I've ground up some coriander and some cumin with my grinder earlier on and I'm just going to add a little bit of that in with some red and yellow peppers we won't use all of them, we're going to use half and then the other half we'll sprinkle on for presentation later so we pop those in and go in with some fresh tomatoes and we're going to let that simmer for a bit so I'm just going to add a little bit of water to that just to loosen it up, there's going to be a lot of water coming out of it and that just needs to cook out a little bit and that's going to make your sauce. You can add a little bit of uh, fresh tomato sauce to that. If you are going to be using a, a puree or a tinned uh, tomato, they're quite tart and you need to add a little bit of sugar to that just to balance the flavor. You don't want to use sugar, you can use a bit of honey in that just to balance the flavor so you've got a bit of sweet, sour and salty. You can also add a little bit of vinegar and that will also pick up the flavour quite nicely. Just probably about a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar would be really good or some uh, white wine vinegar. We're going to move on to the fish. We're going to just add a bit of fiesta spice to this. Add some barbecue fiesta spice from Crown National. I'm going to do about a tablespoon of that and we want some Portuguese peri peri. I'm just going to do about a teaspoon of that and the peri peri is just going to add a little bit of a bite to it there's already some bite from the barbecue fiesta and there's some nice flavors coming through there from the, the salt and probably paprika that they've also put into this so we're just going to give it a good mix okay so we're just going to quickly pop these into some flour these little fish bites And then I'll just dust them nicely. This is going to make them nice and crispy and then they're going to hold their shape in the sauce. If you put them in the sauce, they're just going to break up. It's just going to become a big mush. So nice to just individually do them. Okay, I'm just going to add some sweet chili sauce to this just to thicken it up a little bit. Probably about three or four tablespoons will do. And this will just bring it together quite nicely with the old El Paso sauce and well, seasoning that we put into it. And I'm going to get on to starting with frying the fish. Um, I'm just going to add a little bit more seasoning to these fish uh, just to give them an extra bit of bite. Just check if your pan's hot, put one in. If it starts sizzling, it's hot, it's not. Okay, pan's not quite ready yet, so we'll just roll these a little bit. And I might even dust them again with some more flour and that's just going to form a nice little crust around them and keep all that moisture in so they become nice and crispy on the outside and tender on the inside. What you want to do is you just want to dust all the excess flour off. If you, if you don't, you're going to end up with a lot of flour in the, in the fat and it's going to start burning very easily. So we're just going to add them one by one. And they don't need very long in the pan. There's literally a few seconds and uh, you can turn them or a few seconds, literally a minute or two. Just want to get them nice and crispy on the one side. As long as your oil is nice and hot, um, they'll cook very, very quickly because they're small pieces of fish. It's going to give this a stir. It's already starting to catch on the bottom. It's ready now for our final presentation. So it's, uh, I can turn that off and just let it rest a bit. 
it's nice and sticky it's not too runny you don't want to make it very very runny otherwise it's going to end up all over your your nachos and they they're going to get wet and soggy and you don't want to have wet soggy nachos so you just want it nice and enough moisture just to keep them give them a nice uh, texture on the top or consistency on the top they've been in a couple of minutes now and i'm just going to give them a quick turn some more salt, a few more peppers, you got nice cooked and raw peppers, and go with a bit of a bit more cheese, and then we're going to place our fish for that. So we'll just put a few pieces here and there, and we'll give that a bit of sauce. sauce, peppers for colour, and finish it with some cheese. And then we're just going to go into a nice hot oven with that. This has been in an oven for a few minutes now. And look at that, that is absolutely amazing. Finish it off now with Guacamole on top. You guys can just tuck into that. Put a sour cream on the side. You can either serve it on the top or you can just serve it alongside it. And you can just tuck in and add a few little peppers on there for some colour. And some fresh coriander just to finish it off. There we go. And that's the final dish. Just to the dining room and now boys are ready to eat their fingers off. Let's give this stuff a go. Yo. Take more. Need a bit of fish. Bit of guacamole. It's actually really good. A lot better. And what do you think? Oh, better than a black top. What do you think of the consistency of it? What do you... What's the texture like? Mm. I don't know how to describe it. Is it more firm? Is it... It's very firm. And yeah. From a taste point of view, does it taste fishy or is it not? I taste the, the flavour around it, but it's not fishy at all. 